My name's Ted White. I'm an adjunct professor here at Keene State College in the Film Studies Department. And my focus is film production. My kind of special interest is documentary, nonfiction filmmaking, but I teach all levels of production, um, cinema diversity, and taught a bunch of classes here over the last 10 years. So it's called My Beautiful Nightmare, and it's um, kind of about the ups and downs of being a father of a kid with a significant disability. Um, my daughter's 10 now, and she was born with Down syndrome, which was a huge shock at the time. Uh, we didn't know um, that she had anything going on prior to her birth, and she didn't seem that healthy for a couple of weeks. We're kind of like, hmm, something's up. And so when we got the news that she had Down syndrome, I was just devastated, and I had this uh, sense that that I just wasn't up for it, like that I, my kind of ignorance and prejudices against the idea of what disability meant were really strong. I was just like, oh my gosh, you know, I thought I was like a good dad because I have a son who's older. And so I'd been a dad for a few years and I was like, I'm really good at this. I got this, no problem. And then when my daughter was born, with special needs, I was just like, oh man, you know, this is too much. I, can't, I won't be able to handle this. It'll freak me out and I'll fail. And um, so the film kind of uh, explores over 10 years I've been working on it. So it basically includes footage from her being, you know, a few weeks old to, you know, pretty recently on her 10th birthday. 10 year birthday. These kind of ups and downs in which I kind of like um, sort of am overwhelmed by the experience and then I'm kind of like then I kind of settle with it I'm like yeah great I'm comfortable again and then I'll kind of get uncomfortable and then I'll get comfortable again and so it's just kind of an, uh, a lot of ups and downs um, the nightmare part, some people, like in my family, felt like, God, that's such a strong word. That sounds really bad. Um, but, you know, that's why it's called my beautiful nightmare, because I think it started as something that I thought was kind of terrifying and then got pretty good. I mean, I'm really, I love her so much. She's a really fun person. We have like the closest friendship and our family dynamic has been good. My son gets along really well with her, my wife. Everybody's close. Um, but being connected to somebody who in some ways is really different from other people is just, it keeps coming up. You don't kind of just get over it. Um, the rest of the world is it's always kind of new and often kind of uncomfortable for them and so and I guess as a parent your expectations of your kid um, you want them to achieve and do really great and when they're kind of on a different um, timeline learning things a lot slower and with more difficulty you just really have to adjust your assumptions and your your goals but we've also tried to, um, you know, aim high, like get her doing everything, anything and everything she's interested in and, and could, you know, have fun with. So we haven't protected her, you know, too much. When my son was born, I did, you know, kind of home movies from, I think maybe even like day one or something. Um, so, I, you know, I was kind of like, little tiny kids are interesting beings, you know, they're just so miniature and bizarre. It's like, that's, that, visually, that's cool, you know? And to be able to, you know, sort of track um, somebody's development over time has always interested me. A lot of my films are sort of about the passage of time and some sort of the effects of that. Um, 
and when my daughter had to have open heart surgery when she was two months old because she had a big heart defect that was really holding her back. So we decided we'd do that and um, we had to stay in the hospital for the better part of a week. And so um, I was like, how am I just gonna sit around this hospital for a whole week when maybe, maybe the surgery will go terrible and she'll die and I'll just be, you know, there and, or maybe there'll be complications and it'll just be incredibly tense. Maybe it'll go well. I just did not know and I needed some, something to kind of occupy myself, like a coping mechanism. So I was like, I'll make a film of this. That's a good idea. So I kind of stepped outside of myself and was like, oh, this is interesting. These, this family here is like, their kid is having this intense surgery and you know, they must really be going through a lot. And, but I, I kind of created this separation in which I was thinking about it, like my, myself kind of as an external character. I did film myself a few times, like from a tripod, but um, mostly I just was sort of filming the environment. And I was like, you know, if this works out, you know, if all things go well and we survive, then maybe I've begun a, a really interesting film project. And that's pretty much what turned out. And I was like, well, I got to keep going now because everybody's going to want to know, so what happened next? You know, how are you guys doing? Did you, you know, how's your daughter doing? How are you doing? How's your family doing? So it's been 10 years of kind of events unfolding um, some of which have been really joyous and others, you know, kind of more painful. Yeah, so, yes. Basically, the, the, the idea for the film happened, like, right after her birth, yeah. Well, there's a famous British film series called, uh, originally called Seven Up, where they filmed the same kids every seven years until they became pretty old. They're like in their 60s, I think, now. And so the idea of sort of these periodic uh, visits of somebody's life on film, I think, is kind of an amazing idea. Um, I'm really, at this point, just looking forward to finishing this, the film that encapsulates this first 10 years and seeing what it's like to share that with the world. I, my goal is that other people who have kids with disabilities, especially dads, um, would, you know, be able to relate to my film and the, the happy parts would be kind of encouraging to them and the sad, difficult parts would, would um, feel real, kind of authentic to them. And they'd, they'd appreciate those. So I'm, I'm hoping people, you know, uh, get something out of the film. And I may continue, you know, like, okay, let's do from age 10 to 20. Or maybe I'll just be like, that's good enough. It'd be nice to just not worry about filming everything for a while. It's been really interesting doing a film about my own, myself and my family life, really um, in depth and kind of the sort of the beauty and the difficulty of it. Um, and it's interesting to try to portray things honestly and get over your, my own feelings about like, you know, how I'm portraying myself or my kids. You know, you kind of want to shape that stuff and sort of romanticize it. And so finding the fine line of that is has been interesting and i decided i'd just sort of include talking about that in the film so there's one scene in which i talk about how i was drawn to filmmaking because you can kind of manipulate the world and make it seem a certain way and then i realized you know i was starting to kind of romanticize my own family's life in this film i was like wait a minute you know you got to be real, so even if it's unflattering and even if it's a little disappointing or or whatever it is, you got to show that. So it's been a interesting challenge to try to be honest to the subject matter, even when that's me and my family.